What's up guys? Welcome back to Rack of Lamb and another episode of Review Rack, where Rack of reviews to all things related to food and kitchen. Today I'll be testing out this sous vide cooker from Kitchen Boss. I've heard many great things about this cooking gadget and method, but haven't actually tried it out myself. So when Kitchen Boss reached out and asked me if I wanted to test out their new product, this G320 sous vide cooker, I thought, hell yeah! Can't refuse an opportunity to learn a new cooking technique. In a nutshell, sous vide means under vacuum in French and involves cooking vacuum sealed food in a temperature controlled water bath. And why has it become so popular you ask? Well, vacuum packing the food and cooking them in constant lower temperatures for a specified amount of time prevents overcooking and allows juices and moisture that would otherwise be lost during high heat cooking to be retained. Restaurants commonly serve steak that uses the sous vide method. So if you're wondering why your steak is perfectly medium rare each and every time, that may be the answer. I'm a huge fan of steak myself, so why don't we get started and I'll walk you through sous vide cooking using this new tool from Kitchen Boss. In addition to their G320 sous vide cooker, Kitchen Boss also sent me their G210 vacuum sealer. Let's check out what comes in these boxes. The box was sealed with a quality control approved sticker, which I highly appreciate. Packaged inside the box was a sous vide cookbook with about 20 recipes, which is a nice addition. There's also a storage bag to house your gadget, some vacuum sealer bags, the manual, and the sous vide cooker itself, which sat heavily on my palms likely because the entire water entry part is made of stainless steel material. The buttons and knob up top were considerately wrapped and attached to the tool is a rounded cable. Lastly, this piece here is an adjustable clamper that you affix to your cooking container to ensure the sous vide cooker stays in place. What's not shown here is the three year warranty after sign up. If you're interested, make sure to keep an eye out for discounts that Kitchen Boss often offers. As for the vacuum sealer, it was sealed with the same reassuring quality control sticker. The box contained a similar storage bag, more vacuum sealer bags in two different sizes. This I'm not sure what it is. And the machine itself, it looked pretty neat. The box also contained a vacuum tube and a manual as well. I'll provide details in the description box for anyone who may be interested in either product. All right, let's remove this plastic and plug the sous vide cooker in to check out its features. Notice the minimum and maximum line markings on the submersible part of the gadget. Water must fall between these lines when you're sous vide cooking. The rigid design and stainless steel construction does make this feel like a safe and secure cookware to use. And after I plugged it in, I immediately noticed its color LCD display. Upon turning the knob, I found preset options that align with the recipes from the cookbook. Ooh, rack of lamb. I think I'm liking this already. There's a bunch of built-in recipes for some of my favorite dishes, including eggs benedict, scallops, mussels, lobster tail, duck, and creme brulee. Following these recipes are personal customizations that you can preset for your own convenience. And what happens when I press this on-off button? I got this error message which is a great safety feature because the cooker has to sit in water to operate properly. I found the options fairly easy to use, which explains why the design was a Red Dot Award winner. Moreover, the device is simple to clean, as a submersible bottom easily twists open and closed. So I don't own one of those sous vide cooking containers. I may consider purchasing one down the line, but today I am going to improvise and use my stainless steel pot. Hopefully this does the job. To start, I poured 16 cups of water into my stainless steel pot. To ensure that the sous vide cooker doesn't swim around aimlessly in the water, I slipped it into the clamper twisted the upper knob to lock the gadget in place, then affixed it to the side of my stainless steel pot by tightening the knob below. 
Given it was my first time using this thing, I may appear a bit uncoordinated, but it didn't take me long to figure it out. Since I'll be testing the gadget out on some New York strip steaks, I selected that built-in recipe, set the temperature to 130 degrees Fahrenheit and the time to one and a half hours. The temperature gauge instantaneously detected that the water was 79.3 degrees Fahrenheit and the tool quickly began to heat the water using its quiet motor. Not to mention the entire unit is waterproof, so it felt safe while it sat in the water. While the water was heating up, I seasoned my New York strip steaks with some salt and pepper. If you're planning to eat the steak right away, it's okay to salt them. On the contrary, if you plan to refrigerate or freeze the steak upon sous vide cooking them, you should season the steak with salt when you decide to eat them. This avoids the salt from drawing moisture out of the steak, leaving you with a dry piece of chalky meat. Each steak weighed about 15 ounces and measured about 1 inch thick, so 1 and a half hours should be sufficient. I then placed the steak into a BPA-free vacuum sealer bag from Kitchen Boss, along with some rosemary and thyme for some added herbal essence. Now I'm ready to close these bags up with the Kitchen Boss vacuum sealer. It was nice to see that there's a compartment to hide your cable. The buttons lit up upon plugging the cord in, and the device itself was rather simple to use. You place the bag into the sealer, press it down to lock it in place, then select dry or wet vac depending on the components in your vacuum sealer bag. Once the red lights start blinking, you may open up the sealer and remove your bag. Simple enough. Once the water hit my preset temperature, it released several beeps, and that's when I dunked the bags of steak in to allow them to cook for an hour and a half. I love that you can set it and forget it, so while I was cooking, I was able to get some errands done. After one and a half hours, I immediately removed the steaks to prevent them from cooking further. I also discarded the herbs and dried the meat on some paper towels. If you haven't noticed, sous vide cooked steak does not look attractive at all. To complete a sous vide steak, you must sear them on both sides to give it that nice charred finish. To do this, I heat up some oil on my cast iron pan. Given I'm currently pregnant and can't have my steak too rare, I cook my steak a bit longer than Steve's for a medium pink dunnis. While my steak was resting, I cooked the remainder for about a minute each side in hopes of achieving a lightly charred steak with a medium rare interior. And here is the moment of truth. I cut open the first steak and it was medium just like this pregnant woman wished for. Then I cut open Steve's steak, and it was medium rare just the way he likes them. So while the sous vide cooker is priced slightly higher than other ones that I've seen on the market, I think that the price is justified by its performance and quality. It's got a bit of weight on it because it's made with durable and sturdy material. It's easy to use, it's quiet, and it gets the job done. One reason why I hesitate to sear steak on the stove top is because it really stinks up the house. But with this gadget, I'm guaranteed the doneness that I prefer in my steak and searing it up only requires two minutes on the stove top. I'm very impressed and excited to use this gadget for more cooking. If my video was helpful to you, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.